This is the preview page for page 7 of issue 5. And that's how far I am so far. Um, beginning of Monday, I already have a new update scheduled for 10 a.m. Uh, the newsletter is ready to go at 11 a.m. Um, I have a few other things I want to take care of today, but I'm going to get back to coloring right now. I'm going to get this page done and the next page done before tackling anything else today. So I'm doing extra work for myself, and you can see these crazy lines. Uh, my printer ink was dying when I was printing these pages, and I have the choice of using these crazy ass pages for issue 5 or these very sharp black crisp pages um I was intending on just using the black pages but when I got to looking at them I realized that I will probably never have this opportunity again to even attempt to make something that outlandish and possibly maybe it happened for a reason and maybe not to overlook that right now so I am carefully and I'll try and I am carefully coloring it because I don't want to get any ink normally I could just color this reasonably quick because I could just go over the black and I have to not have it worry about it but uh, considering I'm trying to preserve that uh, misprint or the cartridge dying look um, I'm taking extra precautionary measures to make sure that I don't go over those lines so it's not only making more work because I have to take my time a little bit more than I normally would, but I'm also going to be doing two different sets. I'm going to be coloring both pages just how I would normally color the spread, but I am hoping, hoping against hope, that this one with the crazy print um, actually turns out incredible so I can use it um, that being said if it doesn't no harm no harm done uh, just wasted a couple hours uh, attempting to make a page like something that it probably would never ever have a chance of doing again so uh, sorry about the lighting it's crap because I'm trying to hold this and record while I color um, with my Copix but yeah I just wanted to take a chance or take a second to explain what's going on uh, if you're following along with my snapchat or my twitter I kind of showed off these two different pages and and it was like, well, what should I do? And uh, I heard back from a friend, and they're like, well, just color them both. And I'm like, well, that makes the most sense, so I might as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just taking time and going that over them. So get you on the other side. We gave the rainbow pages a chance, but it's just not crisp enough, and uh, we're gonna be rocking the black. Obviously. Well, the spread is done for now. Uh, I'm going to put it on the back burner for a few days. Want to do something with the background, but not sure yet, so on to the next page for now. I hope you find your safe place. Your refuge. Thank you. Getting back into it, you see a bunch of clips from previous, well, basically throughout the week. Um, I've been coloring for the entire week, as well as last week, and I'm recording this on Saturday, and I've got about three pages to go. Should be able to finish them tonight, tomorrow, so 
by the time this goes up on Monday, hopefully I'll have finished coloring issue 5. Um, that was P page 11 that I was working on that last one where it has the homage to the Incredible Hope TV show when he's walking off uh, basically the end credits for the show. Um, I mentioned it when I was on Arcasters number 12 when I was filming in for Kevin Cross. And uh, finally, finally got around to uh, getting to those colors page. Um, and it turned out awesome. Uh, I had a little cleanup work to do, but um, as soon as I had that page colored, I knew I wanted to cut that little scene for Snapchat. So uh, if you're not following me on Snapchat, uh, I suggest you do if you want to keep up to date. Uh, I'm basically posting the process of working on all these pages every day. Um, I've been knocking about two to three uh, pages out a day. Um, these last couple days I've gotten about four, I believe. Um, so they've been going fluidly. Um, I say that, but uh, we all know that it takes three, four hours for a page to get done. So it's still a heck of a tedious process. Um, I have had quite a few videos to chew through on my watch later list on YouTube, so uh, thankful for that because I have had a great deal to catch up on. Um, basically, the page you're watching me color right now is page 20. Let me double check that in my mind real quick. Um, yeah, so it's page 21 actually. Um, it'll have this page, the next page, and then there's two pages left of the issue. And that's how far I've gotten to this point. It's pretty awesome. Um, you're seeing me color in the gray tones right now. Um, basically on the bottom and on the top. Um, but it's a flashback scene where V is kind of describing something that happened in her past um, to Zeke. So. Um, yeah, let's just get into it and tell you all about what's been going on this week. Um, basically I got up Monday and had a bunch to get done, so, uh, just hit the ground running from there. Woke up, put a newsletter together. I kind of skipped over January because January's, the beginning of January was kind of a mess, so just didn't have much to report on the art side of things but uh, was able to put one together for this month. It turned, it turned out pretty awesome. I'll put the link down to the newsletter that I put out Monday. Uh, if you didn't catch that, um, also got the video update, the episode fourth episode of the series of last week. This is the fifth episode. Um, I'm liking the process of these. They're coming together extremely well and uh, just enjoying the process, really. Um, that on top of the Motivational Tuesday I'm doing on the 100s group page is turning out pretty cool. And then uh, have been updating pages of pencils on my Patreon. Um, so if you haven't been following me on Snapchat, you can at least follow on Patreon and see the process of issue 5 coming together. Uh, it is definitely quite a process trying to get all these up updates to different social media outlets um, and that's one of the biggest problems um, the, the running around trying to get everything just lined up just perfectly and after I got the page posted on Monday I actually heard back from Kalupi which back in issue 4 I did a spread uh, which used one of their videos as reference to doing this whole spread and we were in touch out of touch about doing an interview for the website and it was touch and go whatnot and like out of the blue last week they contacted me wanted to do something uh, hear back from me so I got a little bio put together whatnot uh, sent them out issue one through four 
uh, so they could have that in their hand and read through it themselves. Um, I mailed that out last week when I mailed the uh, issues off the Eisner Awards, which I heard back from them this week too, and they have received my package. So I'm stoked on that. Um, but yeah, put this little interview together for Kalupi, and they asked me a bunch of questions, and I think it turned out really well. I'll put the link down that as well. And that was my Monday. Monday was insane. Um, just had a bunch going on. It all just turned out pretty cool. Um, other than that, going into Tuesday, did the motivational Tuesday, and was kind of talking about um, the interview process and uh, one crucial bit of information that would set your part project apart from others. So that'll be the question. If you want to throw that in the comments down below, um, kind of what sets your project apart from others, and are you using that for your elevator pitch? Um, I'm not necessarily just yet. I think I'm going to reword for my, my elevator pitch for when I start doing cons in a couple months here. Um, basically right now, it is, uh, I never forgot, it's about a drifter who wanted to accomplish one last goal before he could pass along happily. Um, and it kind of follows along the lines of the Walking Dead series where um, if you watched the first season of The Walking Dead, it's much more about intent and purpose and not just about trying to survive the zombie apocalypse, which it seems the, ser the series has become. Um, I think the intention and purpose makes it a lot more meanif meaningful and actually gives you a goal as a reader to get to. Um, I also brought it up. Uh, Peter Palmiotti and his creator-owned group on Facebook also asked um, about what kind of inspired your story and uh, I was talking about how losing my sister a couple years ago kind of inspired the story and I think as it starts to unfold you'll kind of see more so why it's inspired by that but not necessarily just why it is so uh, Along with all of that, um, had had some good conversations with a couple friends, um, and also I just want to bring this up to Gaz right now. Um, I did get his note the other day. Um, I was hope I knew he had seen it already, um, but I am working on his a pinup of one of his characters in the horror. Uh, for him, uh, I was hoping to get it done with January, but then I got into coloring issue five, and that took priority over everything else. So <sighs> I have to tell him that I have redrawn it about two or three times. So I don't know if it's just his art specifically that uh, you have to draw a couple times just to get it perfect, or uh, <laughs> it's just we've got it in our mindset now that we have to draw it a couple times because it's the horror. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty funny, but uh, you will most likely be seeing a process video of me drawing that pinup for him next video, or next week's episode, so that's going on right now. Uh, this week's been a real whirlwind, because um, along with everything, there was a creator that a friend of mine, uh, we follow uh, Rooster Teeth Productions, and have for well over a decade. Last October, we met one of the original founders, and uh, it was just awesome to get to talk to, to somebody on that creative team that started this whole project. Um, along with that, one of the most influential creators um, passed away a year ago um, last week. Uh, his name was Monty Oom. And uh, he basically created the series Ruby. If you haven't checked that out, I highly suggest it. Um, it's on Netflix, uh, Volume 1 and 2, and then on YouTube. It's RWBY. I will link to the playlist of Ruby uh, here on YouTube down below. Uh, and it's so amazing because he kind of thought of this whole idea of this anime, which was basically out of left field. 
um, they had been working on machina mach Machinima and uh, so they had been working on this and out of the blue he wanted to work on an anime project and I, as far as I know it's the first American cartoon anime to actually go over to Japan which is huge um, the strides and strokes that show has made since Monty has passed are just astronomical. Um, they put out a game this year. Uh, they're working on the third volume. Um, and they were talking about just last week uh, they had a event down in Australia, RTX Australia, where uh, the founding creators of Rooster Teeth had a panel and they were talking about Monty and uh, they were nervous about one of his last shots he put together for the 13th season of Red vs. Blue, which just astronomical feats they've all created, which this week definitely hasn't been an easy one because the whole Monty passing a week ago, or a year ago, and that kind of brought on this whole project of my own. Um, he was one that always pushed people to create more and put more awesome stuff out in the world and with his passing last year I think that was one of the last pushes I needed to actually start my own comic series um, and if you've been following me on Facebook I've been posting a bunch of things like um, the start of the process I think I even threw up a picture of the first covers I painted and it was meant to be where it was the zombie coming out of the ground holding these rose bushes and after painting the first couple ones I realized that that wouldn't necessarily make a good front cover of the series um, but it's such a pivotal point um, of the story that I definitely wanted to make it stand out on the book so those became the back covers which I love even more um, because you're because it kind of symbolizes leaving the la the issue with that thought in the mind of him coming out of the ground holding these rose bushes um, so getting back into all this the Monty tributes uh, there's a few blogs I've linked down down below um, from last year when Monty passed and kind of put you in the mindset I was thinking of when I actually created this whole series. Um, I think I had a rough, very rough outline when I started this all. Um, I still have that in my notebooks and everything, but uh, it's just awesome to look back and to see how far this project itself has come in the year. Uh, now I'm finishing up the fifth issue, like, that was unheard of to me after I got into this first issue. Uh, I believe one of those blogs that <laughs> I comment on just how difficult it was starting out because I had gotten to inking the first couple pages and it took five times longer than I had originally planned. Like I figured it would just take a couple hours just to ink a couple pages, but no. Like once you get into this process you realize it actually take some hard work and dedication to get into so, uh, all these links are going to be down below if you want to check those out um, especially a blog titled create and I believe that's the one that um, when Monty's passing really hit me um, uh, last year when Monty did pass um, one of his good friends and one of the Rooster Teeth founders Matt Holm um, instead of like flowers or anything like that uh, they re respectfully requested people just create something and uh, it hit me the other day when it had been a year because I had set an alarm to go off every year and it's a Monty boom create day um, and like that alarm went off on my phone and I was working on issue 5 because I had gotten up at 4 o'clock and it went off at like 8 o'clock in the morning and like just hit me like a wall of bricks. Um, this week I've just been going crazy 
um, trying to get these pages colored and I would get I, I was going so hard for a couple of days that I would get to bed at 10 o'clock at night but then I'd wake up at 2 a.m. which normally I would get up at 4 a.m. and that's reasonable but uh, when I got up at 2 a.m. I just hit the ground running uh, basically I know I did it for Monday when I woke up and wrote the newsletter out and got the upload ready for the video update and everything else but like man some of those things just hit you out of nowhere and uh, I have been putting myself into this issue so much that uh, you can even see with the page I'm working on right now um, you have the flashback scenes around the main panel which uh, that yellow I'll tell you is one of the biggest gambles I think I took for this issue um, you get to the scene where Donnie's in the formal um, attire shop and uh, there's some basic colors that is go are going to be following along with him and his storyline now but then it got back to their page and I knew that school bus was going to be pretty pivotal but at the same time um, yellow is such a wild color you don't know if it's going to complement or it's just going to stand out on its own so it's taking a big risk so you go from these blues and the greens of Donnie's storyline and then straight into this yellow and uh, there's a couple massive pages of yellow which actually turned out incredibly well I was surprised how well they turned out because that's a lot to ask of just one color and uh, it turned out really awesome. I love how they turned out, and the yellow is really standing out well. Um, you can see from the thumbnail of this episode, um, it's got this page and the next page as well. Um, you have this yellow and the blue and the red, like all complementing each other, and it just turned out awesome. I'm loving these pages. Uh, with the two pages left to go. Uh, this is definitely the best issue so far um, just because my vision of all these pages is coming together so clearly and awesomely that I'm stoked to have people actually check it out and uh, follow along with this story. Um, so a few more things to mention before I uh, this video ends. Um, Art of Plug book came to this week and uh, I spent half a day just looking at it in awe like it's so awesome to see somebody's career that spans I think it's 45 years um, and I believe Kevin Cross pointed it out when it was on Kickstarter and I was like hell yeah I'll donate and just showed up this week and like it was such a awesome inspirational thing like just to see where he started and I like I want to do some of his pages and see how well I can replicate his pages um, but just to see his whole process put out in this book like it's awesome I think I've, I've just had it by my nightstand and have picked a couple pages just to stare at and just see his compositions and everything like they just turn out awesome uh, another another note of Kickstarter since we're talking about it um, I did mention Arcaster's 12 earlier, and that was one where I filled in for Kevin Cross, but it was because I was, I've done four Kickstarters this far, and for the fifth issue, it'll be my fifth Kickstarter for this series, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I was explaining a few things on Arcaster's 12, so if you haven't checked that out, I'll put the link down below, but um, that leads me into Jeff's Kickstarter. Uh, Jeff Lafferty uh, is one of the art casters, does his show with Scott and Kevin each week, and he's putting together a movie book, which I'm extremely stoked for. If you check out the Kickstarter, link down below, um, give him some love, because that book is going to be immense. Uh, also, he's doing 16 days of sketches um, until it funds and whatnot that he's going to be giving away to backers of the Kickstarter so I definitely uh, even if he is only five bucks chip in get that digital file of his book and
and uh, get ready to be blown away because his prints are amazing and I'm so looking forward to it. Um, so check out Jeff Lafferty's Kickstarter for his uh, movie cinema book and uh, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to wrap up coloring this weekend. Uh, I'm going to take a color, couple pages to figure out the layout of issue 5 and then after that uh, I believe I'm going to be painting the variant cover for issue 5 as well as the uh, original and variant covers for issue 6 as well as a bunch of other paintings so next week's probably going to be a lot of painting um, I'll get back to it hope everything, all, everybody's other projects is treating them well awesomely um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, thanks for paying, taking some time and spending some time catching up on what I've been up to this week. Uh, love you guys. Hope you're all doing well. And check in with you next week. Later. Love you.